folks, three months ago, I posted my last video on this YouTube channel and then I vanished. What the hell happened? Am I alive? What's going on? Is everything okay? Thank you for asking. You're very kind. So I am alive and I am well. And I don't know if you noticed it, but I have a new setup. I am in a new house. So too many things happened at the same time. But the TLDR of why I vanished from this channel was because of this. I spent the last couple of months diving heads down on a new software that I'm going to announce today. I mean, not officially announced because it's still in beta, but I want to tell the world that this exists. And then at the end of this video, I am going to explain what is the tech stack that I decided to use for this new software. So first of all, why did I decide to build the software? It all started here when I recorded this infamous video about Inertia JS. I thought this piece of tech was so incredibly cool that my mind was like, man, I need to build something ASAP. I need to build a new software and use this piece of tech. And that's what I did. But here's the problem. You need an idea. So I thought, well, Technically, I already have a software that is live and there are users using it. It's called Tech School. I use this website as an example for every single video that I record. And in my mind, this software is finished. But many people were like, well, it's cool and all that I can click on courses. I can search for bootcamp see your recommendations for videos on TypeScript, but then like, what can I do with it? I can click here, then I am going to get redirected to YouTube. Okay. And that's it. That's all it does. It simply shows you cool courses. That's it. But you cannot log in. You cannot rate the course. You can't really share your own courses with other people. These are courses that I recommend. And some people, these people right here, to be more specific, they also recommend, but you need to create a PR to end a course to tech school. So it's a bit cumbersome. You need to be very technical to open a GitHub PR. The feedback that I got here was, okay, this is cool. But I need so much more. Like this is not enough. I need more. So that's where Course Shell steps in. To be more precise, thecourseshell.com. That's the domain. I wanted to expand Tech School. So as you can see here, I can create an account. You can either log in with GitHub or Google. I already have an account. So I'll just sign in with GitHub. You have the same features as tech school. You have a courses page where you can search for things. These courses, they belong to a YouTube channel. You can see the details of a channel. You can see all the courses that a channel has. And in terms of new features, you can create a playlist. Now, this is not my playlist. This is your playlist. You can create whatever you want. So once you create your account, you can go to your profile. On my profile, you can see my profile picture. I have a country selector if you want to display your cool country flag. For premium users, you can connect your YouTube channel to show people that you are a verified creator. And then if you scroll down, you can simply click on new playlist, type whatever name you want, a description, click create. As you can see, I have many examples here. I have a playlist for all the best business podcasts that I listen to. I have one for people who wants to study Elixir and Phoenix. But this platform is not tied to only tech things. You can create a playlist about whatever you want. So on my free time, I do powerlifting, which is extremely cool. So in case somebody wants to start lifting heavy weights, you can watch this playlist to learn 
how to create your first program, what's powerlifting all about. Then let's say that you enjoyed this course on how to start powerlifting. You could click on the course to see the details, see the channel, who owns the course. You have the duration, the price. At the moment, I only support adding YouTube videos to the platform, but soon you're going to be able to add courses from any platform or maybe even books or online documentation. You can see the person that curated this video. In this case, it was me. Then if you like this course, you can add it to your library. On my case, I already added it to my library. And then I can come here and mark it as not started, in progress, completed. So if I mark it as completed and I go back to my powerlifting fundamentals playlist, you can see that my learning progress here is 25%. I watched one course out of the four that I'm recommending here. And one of the most requested features, reviews. Finally, you can rate the courses. Going back to my profile, you can see the reviews from the person. So you can see that I reviewed every single one of those courses. And if I want to review another one, all I have to do is come here, click on write a review, five stars. Dang, this course is fire emoji. Click submit and there you go. And if you subscribe to the creator's plan, you can connect a YouTube channel so you can see I have a verified Daniel Berkholz YouTube channel here. And not only that, but I have a dashboard of analytics that you can see how many people are viewing your courses, how many are viewing your channel, and how many of them are clicking to watch those on YouTube. So you have some cool metrics. You can also connect another YouTube channel if you want. On my case, I only have this one. So you can see the verified badge here. And finally, I have a feed where you can see what other people are doing on the platform because I want this to be a community where people log in and then see what their friends are studying. So anyways, just a high level overview and the following feature is coming soon. But for now, you can see all the activity from people that are using the platform. But I know if you clicked on this video, you're more interested on my tech stack. So let's talk about it. As I just mentioned, I fell in love with inertia. So obviously, that's what I chose for my front end. And obviously, most of my professional experience has been with React. So that's what I chose. But technically, you could pick Svelte or Vue. So I chose React Inertia. In terms of UI libraries, again, obviously, in my opinion, I chose Shed CN because that's the most famous UI library available for React. And for my linter, I am using Biome instead of Prettier and ESLint because Biome is much faster. And here's the thing, because Biome is much faster to run, I have a hook inside Claude code, to always format my code every single time Claude does an edit. So if Claude just created a file or edited a file, it's going to run this magical command right here, mix format. And what this command does is it runs mix format, which formats all the Elixir code, but then it also runs npm run format on the assets directory. So check this out. I'm going to run mix format dot all. That was pretty darn fast in my opinion. I also use ESLint and Prettier on another project and it takes like five seconds to format all the files. Now imagine this, every time Claude changes a file, you're going to have to wait five to 10 seconds. It's so slow. Now Biome is so much faster that I have no trouble asking Claude to always keep the code formatted by default. So that's my reason for Biome. How about the backend? Well, again, if you watch my channel, it's no surprise to anyone that I chose Elixir and Phoenix because this is the most performant, battle-tested, 
and robust tech stack available today. And then in terms of database, I used SQLite for tech school because this website is read heavy. In fact, I don't think I ever write to the database only when I'm seeding new courses to it. But on tech school, that's different. This is very write intensive and I am not a database expert. So I was like, well, Postgres is better tested. The entire world uses Postgres. So why should I pick something different? I chose Postgres. In terms of background jobs, I chose Oban because this is pretty much the only and the best background jobs library that we have available for Elixir. They have a paid plan with more complex features, but I am on the free plan. I'm using the free library. And at the moment, to be honest, I don't even have anything complex running on Oban. I just have some things that run on the background every 10 minutes to recalculate some of these statistics that I show on the homepage. Then I also pick the trending courses, the trending playlists, and the trending tags every 10 minutes. I do the math to see what are the top ones, and then I just display them like the cached version on the homepage. In terms of third party, I was also very conservative for sending emails because I send a welcome email. And if you pay for any plan, you're going to receive an email saying, thank you so much. Welcome to the student plan. Welcome to the creator's plan. So I send emails, but not as frequently. So I'm actually on the free plan of reset. And yeah, I do have plans for recording another video, breaking down all the costs that I have for this new SaaS. Then for payment, obviously I'm using Stripe. Now, to be honest, I would love to use a merchant of record, but none of them support payments to Brazil, which is a shame. Like dealing with taxes and all this legal stuff is very tiresome. I spent way too much time collecting like tax information for any Brazilians that visit my website because I need to emit like a tax document called Nota Fiscal. So it was tiresome. I had, I spent way too much time configuring how I was dealing with taxes here. And I would love to have a merchant of record that supports sending my payments to Brazil. All right. In terms of error tracking, I am using Honey Badger. Now, what about Sentry? I chose Honey Badger because I didn't know why back then but I knew they had a reputation for being amazing in the Elixir ecosystem. So I was like, well, okay, I'll check the docs. After checking the docs, I realized that they have so many features for Elixir and the setup is ridiculous. You need to install like one library and configure that library and that's it. And then on Sentry is like, oh, you need to install this custom HTTP parser and whatever, and then do that and this and this and this. And then Hunter Badger is like, just install the Honey Badger lib. And they have some very cool dashboards. Check this out. They have an Oban dashboard for Elixir, but they also have a Phoenix dashboard where you have stats about what are the slowest controllers, what are the slowest actual queries, which for some reason it's not showing here, but it should. So this is very cool. And if you are using live view, you have even more information here about the event counts, the performance of all the events on live view, the mount performance. So yeah, it feels like they are very focused on Elixir. That's why I chose Honey Badger and not Sentry. Then finally, my hosting platform, Fly.io. I am using two machines. One is constantly turned off but I have it here just in case. And I have the auto scaling turned on. So in case this first server gets overloaded, the second one is going to turn on. And my machine size is not too crazy. I have about one gigabyte of memory and I have two CPU cores, but 
both of these stats are very underutilized. So I'm paying some extra here. And in terms of database, I am using the managed Postgres service from Fly, which gives you a cluster with a replica. But most importantly, it gives you automated backups. So you can come here and create a custom backup, or you can simply restore one of the ones that was automatically created for you. And that's the type of thing that I want to automate. I'm not a server guy. I'm not a backend guy. I am primarily a front-end developer who is learning full stack for the first time now. But what about AI? Am I using Tidewave? Or am I using Cloud Code? Or am I using both? Tidewave Web is a paid product where you have access to a very cool interface where Tidewave have access to your browser and then it automates testing the front end. It's very cool. And they do have an integration with Phoenix, Rails, and React. But in order to use it with React, you need to use V as your bundler, which I love. But by default, Phoenix uses ESBuild, and I prefer sticking to defaults. So I'm using ESBuild to send my inertia front end to the client, which is unfortunate because I would love to use this for my full stack development. So I'm using Tidewave only as an MCP, not the paid product, which is very cool, but unfortunately I can't use. And then for the paid AI, I'm using Cloud Code, which is king. I think everyone agrees that Cloud Code won. It's much better than OpenAI Codex, than Gemini CLI. So I'm sticking to defaults here, Cloud Code won. And yeah, just to finish the architecture, I'm using a monolith. I am using React, but the backend is responsible for sending the React frontend. It's not a separate React single page app where the backend is hosted on Fly, then React is hosted on Vercel or Netlify. No, it is one big monolith. And to be more precise, I'm even doing server-side rendering with Inertia. So Elixir is responsible for server rendering the front end using a Node.js worker and then sending the subsequent responses as a single page app. So it's a monolith, okay? I don't like the idea of having a separate front end and back end as a solo developer. As a team, sure, but as a solo developer, I think that's just going to slow you down. So this is my tech stack. Let me know your opinions on the comments. Let me know if you want more inertia content because I do have plans of releasing some amazing content about inertia and elixir. So let me know if you're interested. And of course, feel free to test Core Shell and give me any feedback. I am extremely open to any type of feedback. You can go brutal with the feedback, okay? That's it. Thank you so much. See you next time.